The fallout ghoul. Is it possible for extreme radiation to cause immortality? Or could a radiation sickness drug cause people to heal forever? Uh, why am I not dead? What's the science behind the fallout ghoul? In this video, we'll answer that and show what sorts of positive mutations humans have developed and the one single ability scientists are currently working to harness that could lead to longer lives. Welcome to Lifespan News, I'm Emmett Short. I loved the new Fallout series from Amazon, and this episode is not gonna spoil the show, but there will be some certain aspects that you may consider spoilers, so you've been warned. The Ghoul, that's my favorite character, and one of the many interesting things is his apparent long life. His story goes back hundreds of years to before the bombs fell, when he heard this guy say, The biggest obstacle to achievement has been the brevity of the human lifespan. It's prevented us from uh, working on projects that require centuries, maybe even millennia to see through. So ideally, Buds Buds will keep my project on track centuries into the future. More on that later. Now, according to the Fallout video game, ghouls have a long lifespan due to their exposure to high levels of shortwave ionized radiation from nuclear reactions. Radiation poisoning, at levels way beyond any human could typically survive, triggered a mutation within the nervous system and interrupted neurotransmitter decay along the spinal cord. Something or other simple, right? Yeah, one single mutation to live longer. Is that all it takes? Probably not, but maybe. See, Fallout uses a familiar concept in modern fiction. A little radiation is bad. A lot of radiation is worse and an excessive amount of radiation gives you superpowers, I guess. The tempting principle to use to explain this is called hormesis, which describes how small doses of radiation might actually benefit us, strengthening the body like a vaccine strengthens immunity. But even if hormesis were at play, the nature of radiation exposure, especially at high levels, is inherently random. It doesn't uniformly mutate cells in a beneficial way. Instead, each cell hit by radiation could mutate entirely differently, if at all. Hoping that every cell in your body reacts the exact same way to radiation isn't just optimistic. It, it defies the basic principles of biological randomness. It would be like expecting a tornado to build a house. It's just not how randomness works. So if our goal is to use radiation exposure to result in a longer life, that leaves a lot of room for error. It's, it's mostly error. And even if every single cell in our bodies did get the exact same beneficial random mutation, what do we even mean specifically by beneficial mutation? Not many people know the difference between the noxious and the benign. That's true. Like the LRP5 gene that increases bone density and makes bones more resistant to fracture. Strong bones. Sounds like it would help you live longer, right? People with the mutation have been able to walk away unharmed from severe car accidents, but they sink like a stone in a swimming pool. On the Tibetan Plateau, 78% of the population has a version of the EPAS1 gene that allows wider blood vessels in their lungs and around their body, which provide for better oxygen uptake. They can survive at altitude with less oxygen than most other humans on the planet. Again, it seems like the ability to breathe in harsh conditions could be helpful to extend lifespan, but it's really just preventing death in a very specific environment. These people still age, they aren't immune to snake bites, and they definitely can't do this. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. So, while many genetic mutations may be awesome, in some scenarios, they don't necessarily lead to increased lifespan. So what does? Well, our ability to heal might be the single source mutation that could provide for a longer lifespan. And yeah, it's a possibility. A woman in Scotland, Jo Cameron, was discovered to have two mutations on her FAAH gene, which gave her an increased resistance to pain. Silencing that same FAAH gene also seems to speed up wound healing and helps the brain erase fearful memories. 
I mean, that makes sense. You know, if I knew I wasn't going to feel much pain and heal quickly from a trauma, I don't think I'd have a hard time letting go of the painful memories either. And it turns out Joe Cameron got the lowest possible score on a common anxiety screening. Lucky her. Better healing has also been attributed to the MG53 protein, which also helps prevent scarring, not just on the skin, but also on other organs, such as the heart, lungs, and kidneys. Another protein that works in tandem with MG53 is called TGF-beta, and that heals wounds, but sometimes so fast that it actually causes scarring. So researchers are working to develop new therapies that inhibit the TGF-beta while promoting MG53. Because if we can heal quickly and perpetually, I mean, that's the whole ballgame. In the Fallout series, a mysterious yellow liquid does stuff like this. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, thank you. Sure thing, buddy boy. And it also apparently is a radiation cure. This is radioactive as hell. You don't have to worry about that anymore, do you, buddy boy? In the real world, treatments like Prusian Blue and Neupogen help manage symptoms after radiation exposure. Now, these drugs focus on symptom management and damage mitigation, not on transforming health or extending life indefinitely. Contrast that with Fallout's mysterious yellow liquid. And this futuristic concoction not only heals, but prevents ghouls from transforming into feral ghouls, suggesting there's a profound genetic and cellular alteration going on. So how could such a miracle cure work, right? Let's say it incorporated a CRISPR-based gene therapy and that could splice in genes that work like the ones I mentioned previously and supercharge our healing response and enhance our DNA, preventing the mutations that lead to radiation sickness and aging. Mix in some senolytics to purge malfunctioning cells, keeping tissues youthful and resilient, sprinkle a dash of synthetic biology, and we could introduce engineered cells that are designed to boost the body's natural repair system, enhancing overall regeneration. And in Fallout, the, the culture does look like it's the 50s, but it's actually 2077 when the bombs drop. So who knows, you know, with all these AI breakthroughs, maybe by 2077, we'll have a similar age reversal concoction. Hey, we want to know your thoughts in the comments about genetic mutation resulting in immortality. And if you'd like to hear specifically about how an aging cure could affect the world, you're definitely gonna wanna check out this video right here. To stay up to date on the latest advancements in human life extension, remember to like, share, subscribe to our channel, and visit lifespan.io to support our mission to share cutting edge longevity science. Bye.